This video is being brought to you by Kingston Technology. From a huge selection of memory, solid state drives, USB drives, and flash cards, it's guaranteed that Kingston will have something that you need that'll fit the computer that you're working on. So visit Kingston.com today and check out one of the latest products, the Mobile Light Wireless. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Tech Examined. I'm your host, Michael Panetta, and tonight we've got part three of the fastest Mac Mini build. So, to the intro! All right, so I kind of thought about doing this one of two ways. I recorded tearing down the complete Mac Mini, taking everything out, explaining what I was doing along the way, or telling myself what to do so I could voice over and uh, go through it all and edit it all up. But then I thought to myself, you know, really, there are a lot of talented people out there on YouTube. I can put the links down below of the people I watched to take it apart, along with the really cool guide that I had uh, to help me along. But I really liked watching the video to do that as I tore it apart. So really what I'm just going to do is go over some of the highlights, uh, maybe give you some tips, uh, you know, on the more difficult parts and point them out uh, as we're going. But really what I want to do is tell you what I put in, uh, the specs of it, and then really what the difference was after as opposed to what we did on the test before and the ultimate test, uh, how fast it'll render a video, which is really what I'm looking to do. Now, one thing, well, you know what? We'll get into that in a little bit. So let's just get into exactly what I did and uh, how this went. All right, so as I mentioned in earlier videos, we were installing two SSDs. We have the one here from Kingston, which is the SSD now KC300. Uh, variety, which is a more uh, uh, business robust uh, uh, flash drive uh, SSD. And then, of course, we've got the HyperX, which is just like the bad boy of the group. And uh, both 480, uh, both blazing speeds. And uh, that's what we're going to test out and show you guys exactly how they operate. Now, installing these was, you know, besides taking out and taking apart the Mac Mini, it was not much of an issue. Now, uh, you know, going through the guide and, and laying out all your screws and, and, your, and your screwdrivers and having the right tools is very, very important when you're doing this. Staying organized, like I said, and taking your time because there are a few ribbons and cables that plug into. Like, for example, one of the first things you actually run into is the Wi-Fi antenna. And it's actually plugged into the one board attached to a semi-round plate that you end up taking off. And if you're not careful, you'll end up pulling that out and you might rip it. So along the way, there are a few other things uh, to take out. Now, we are going to also be doing an upgrade on the memory, which is uh, one of the first things you take out. So it's real simple how to take those out. That is the probably the easiest thing to upgrade on Mac Minis if you do nothing else other than bump up your memory a little bit to give you a little bit more smooth um, uh, feeling while you're walking through your applications and opening things up to let your uh, Mac Mini breathe a little bit as it's operating. So, again, taking out things like the motherboard, which is pretty much everything on here. It's got your graphics card on it. Uh, there are a few hidden things here and there you want to unplug. You got your power supply, which is pretty much sits behind or next to your uh, motherboard or the, uh, you know, the, the complete CPU of this unit. And it's a real funky how you got to twist things and take little pins out to get to certain things. It's pretty amazing how these things get manufactured and uh, you know and designed to fit in such a small spot where you gotta twist something, pull it, tip it up, and, uh, and tip it in. But it's really, really cool. So when you get down to it, you're basically looking at a square box with a frame uh, is what holds your hard drive in there. So once you unplug the hard drive, which we're going to be putting in an external, and uh, probably using as a backup for my computer or my wife's laptop uh, since it's only a MacBook Air. But uh, one of the most important things is uh, a doubler kit. And what this allows you to do is actually take a additional ribbon and plug it into one more slot, which is capable to do on the Mac Mini, and uh, install that. So that's very, very important to have if you're adding a second drive to the Mac Mini. So that is something that definitely very important you want to look into. There's a few places that have them. And uh, again, it's very simple. It's just the second cable for your SSD. And uh, they give you a little bit of a kit 
to install these so it holds everything in place properly. I can put a couple links down below for uh, some varieties that you can find, but uh, it's extremely helpful and uh, you know it gives you everything you need to add all the stuff in there. So once you install your SSDs and you follow the instructions, it's real simple to put that stuff in, then it's time to put the Mac Mini back together. So basically doing it in reverse, or in my case, watching the video of the guy doing it in reverse, putting everything back in, if you laid it out all organized, taking your time to put those tough ribbon cables back in, uh, really didn't have much of an issue doing it, only because I listened to what the guy had to say, and I took my time doing it. Not a problem at all putting it all back together. Plug it all in and uh, put all the screws back in. And the last thing we want to do is basically take our 16 gig of RAM, slide it in there. Again, like I said, probably one of the easiest things to do. You slide it in on an angle, snap it down, and then uh, you want to go ahead and put your one on top of there, slide it in, snap it down, you're all set. And then uh, put the cover back on, flip this thing over, plug it all back in, and see if it boots up. All right, so with a real quick setup, I didn't do any partitions on the KC drive or the HyperX because I really didn't need find the need for it right now. But if you wanted to run Windows 7 or Windows 8, whatever, on the one side, you could do that. Now, for shits and giggles, I was going to raid these together to see how fast I can get them to go. But you know what? That is something that can get pretty tricky. If you lose a drive, you lose everything if you raid them together. So uh, if you want to learn about raid, uh, let me know. Uh, I can do a little uh, looking into it. But uh, Jonathan TLD does a great job explaining it. So once we get everything partitioned out, formatted and everything, I pick my KC drive because that's what I put on there for the business side, uh, the more robust to put the mountain line on. And uh, once we get all that loaded on there, and uh, test this out and see how fast it goes. All right, all right, all right, here we go. This is what we have been waiting for. We're gonna pop this bad boy at a five gig test. And the first drive we are gonna hit up is the KC drive, which is the drive that is housing the uh, Mountain Line uh, software and uh, pretty much everything else that'll be on the computer when it comes to like Final Cut Pro and all that stuff. So. First test, we got our right speed, which is around, uh, that comes in around 300 when it's all said and done. And uh, we do our right speed, or read speed, and we're uh, pegging over 512. So same speeds for the first and second test, and uh, definitely a big difference <laughs> when we were doing the uh, we were doing the standard drive. So uh, that's pretty much the uh, short and skinny of that. So uh what I wanted to do for uh, Giggles is try out the HyperX as well. Now, this is pretty much bare, and I'm going to be putting uh, backup on here and stuff like that. So uh, this comes in a little faster at about 327, 328 on the speeds there. And uh, the read speeds, uh, again, are over 500, 514, 512 on that. So we ran it again, and uh, we're up into three uh, middle threes, or low threes, I should say. And uh, same thing goes for the read speed. So... Uh, you definitely can't go wrong with the uh, SSD. You're quadrupling. Uh, I think we were like, what, 20 and 30 or something like that for the uh, standard hard drive. So a uh, big, big improvement. And uh, I really can definitely see a big difference in this. Okay, so now for what uh, I feel is the most important test, and that is exactly how this is going to operate under pressure when I'm rendering a video and how much time I'm going to save. So uh, we did in the previous test the exact same clip. Uh, it was like a four-minute clip or five-minute clip, and uh, didn't really do any heavy rendering or editing to it, but uh, we matched it up uh, with the iMac as well, which was a little bit slower. So the Mac Mini before the memory and the SSD upgrade finished at around 937, I think it was, and uh, the iMac finished over 10 minutes. So... Uh, going through this test, you see the, the Mac Mini finished up there in the corner, and then uh, as it speeds through the uh, clock, uh, the iMac finishes uh, shortly after that. So with a read rate speed, or I should say a write speed of what we got on the SSDs, you should definitely see an improvement uh, in your performance all around. How much of an improvement you're going to see depends on what you're working on, how you're working on it, what you have on your SSD after a while, if you start, you know, packing it with stuff. 
But uh, as you see here, um, I'm kind of cheating a little bit, but this is finishing up. So uh, this actually ends up finishing at about 743. So, uh, you know, you're saving uh, almost two minutes rendering time. Now, granted, you know, it might be oh, really two minutes. Well, you know what? When you start doing a seven, eight, nine, ten minute video that is uh, probably anywhere from eight to ten gig, of data, uh, you're going to multiply that by, you know, tenfold, and uh, you're going to end up probably saving about, you know, five to ten minutes uh, when you're doing that, and that, in my opinion, is extremely important. So, that is the test after the upgrade. What do you think? Are you impressed? Uh, are you not? And, uh, you know, I, I certainly know that it expanded, extended the life of my iMac, and uh, I can already see that it's working well for my Mac Mini. Now, the Mac Mini does run really loud with the fan uh, when you're rendering and whatnot. So just uh, keep an eye on that. If you have any questions about what I'm talking about, I can do a video on it to show you. It won't be too long. But uh, that is it for me, guys. So uh, like I said, comment down below if you have any questions, uh, and we'll chat about it. Uh, I want to take a quick moment and thank Kingston. Uh, for allowing me to conduct this and to be able to go through this experiment and upgrade on the Mac Mini, uh, providing the product. So thank you guys very, very much. I appreciate it. Uh, so guys, stick around for more. Thank you very, very much for all your support. Be sure to check out uh, the website, techexamine.com, and uh, subscribe for more information and uh, content. And like I said, if you got any questions, hit me up down below. Other than that, you guys have a great one. And I will talk to you later. See ya! Hey guys, this is Mike from Tech Examined. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Here are our two previous videos in case you missed them. And of course, subscribe for more content and check out our website at techexamined.com for more unique reviews and opinions.